everyone, we're back. I'm going to let you see if you can figure out what this week's pattern is. Listen to these words as you read them. Knob, wrap, lamb, gnat. What did you notice about the sounds of those words versus the letters that you saw? If you notice that some of these letters aren't represented with the sounds you hear, then you're right. This week, we're gonna be talking about silent letter digraphs. Remember that a digraph is two letters that goes together and makes one sound, like CH, CH. So these digraphs are still two letters, but notice that one of the letters is silent and its sound is not represented. This is n, n, m, r. Do you notice that one of the letters is silent and sometimes we call that a ghost letter because we don't actually hear it. Let's play around with some of these silent letter digraphs decoding single syllable words. If you notice that WR has this line, it means that it can only go in the beginning of my word. The GN can be found at the beginning or the end. The KN only can be found in the beginning. And the MB is only at the end. So let's play with some of these silent letter digraphs. This would be n ed, ned, nod, nos, nodge. Could we ever have a J at the end? No, we know that no English word ends in J. How about this one? Niche and Nietzsche. Okay, let's try the WR. Remember that this sound is r. reach, reach or retch, roach, roach, and row. Did you notice that some of those words were real words, but we just typically spell them with an R? That's because WR is not as common as just the, the grapheme R or the letter R when we're spelling. Okay, let's try another ghost digraph. How about we have KN? K-N spells N. So this would be Nez, Nep, Ned, Nod. All right, let's do the one that's at the end. This digraph spells M and the B is silent. So this would say fom, fem, firm, foam. All right, last one. We're going to do the GN digraph. And we know that this sound is n, and it could be at the beginning or at the end. Let's try a few. This is node, Need, need, nid. All right, let's put it at the end. Still says n. This would be fin, nine, rin, or min. These digraphs are not very common. So when you're tapping out sounds, if you hear those sounds, most likely it's not these silent letter digraphs. 
This week we're going to play with the common words that we do find these silent letters in so that you can become familiar with them. Let's look at some two syllable words. What if I come to a word in text and I don't know what it is? I'm going to use syllable division to break it up into syllables and read one syllable at a time. My first step, you got it, find your vowels and look between your vowels for consonants. When you have two consonants between your vowels, they slide and divide. So this word is knap. Nope, just nap. Nap sack. A knapsack is a kind of bag. All right, how about this word? Is this resign? No, we know that this is silent and makes the n sound. So let's divide and look for syllables. One consonant between my vowels. Hold on tight. I'm moving to the right. I'm going to break my word into syllables. And this is re sign. Resign. I'm going to resign my position. And one final one. How about this word? All right, find your vowels. Two consonants between my vowels will slide and divide. This word is written, written. She gave me her notes written on a napkin, written. All right, so that's decoding. Now let's take a look at encoding or spelling with ghost letters or silent letter digraphs. If you have your sound boxes and syllable scoops paper, go ahead and take it out now. All right, the tricky thing to remember is that these common words, we have to remember that there's a silent letter there because we can't hear it. So when we're tapping it out, we wouldn't know to put that silent letter. And that's why we have to do lots of practice with these words to know which words have silent letters. Let's start with the word knit. I'm going to learn how to knit so I can knit a baby blanket. Knit, n, i, t. N it. Knit could be spelled like this, but knit has the silent digraph, K N. Okay, let's try this one. How about knee? I fell and scraped my knee on the sidewalk. Knee is n e. And I know that knee also has the silent digraph K-N. It makes one sound, so I put it in one sound box. Knee. And I have my vowel team E-E, -E, representing the long E sound. Um, let's do one more. How about the word night? This word actually can be spelled N, I-G-H, there's my I-G-H vowel team, t night. And this is the night like the time of day. Is it day or night? But we have a homophone, a word that means the same, and this night uses our silent digraph K-N. And when I have K-N, I G H T. This is a knight, like a knight in shining, shining armor. Okay, let's try just a couple more. How about the word wrist, like my wrist is hurting? R I S T. It could be spelled R I S T, but wrist has my W R silent digraph. All right, and the last one is gnome. 
you're going to read a story this week about a gnome. All right, tap out the sounds in gnome. N, O, M, gnome. Gnome has the G N silent digraph at the beginning of the word. O, M. And I know that this would actually say nom, so I need to do something to make my previous vowel long. And I'm going to add my magic E. This is gnome. All right, turn your paper over. Let's try some two-syllable words. What about the word design? I'm going to design a project. D Zine. Tap out the sounds in D. D, E, D, E. And there's my open E says E. D, Zine, S, I, N. And I know that this has a silent letter digraph because it has the word sign in it, and I already know. Do you notice that Design, the S, is making more of a Z sound? That's the voiced S, and we often find voiced S when it is surrounded by vowels. The word is design. How about the word climber? The rock climber made it all the way to the top. Climb, er, climber. K, l, i, m, climb, er. And there's my er suffix, meaning it's someone who does it. So a climber is someone who climbs. Do you notice that in design and climber, both of these have syllables that would appear that they should be short, but the vowel is actually long. This is design and climber. So we have to be careful practicing words this week because some of these patterns are a little bit trickier and we have to tune in to not just the sounds, but also the letters. All right, I hope you have a great week. I'll see you next time.